This video talks about inhaled anesthetics. If you want to follow along with me, please feel free to do so by going to page 476, first day 2012. Now this video is not really about understanding inhaled anesthetics. More it's about how you can remember it easily. Okay, so the way I remember uh, anesthetics is like this. I remembered them with this mnemonic, INHEMS. These are the different types of um, inhaled anesthetics that's out there. Okay, so INHEMS, I know it's a little weird, but it works for me. I is for isoflurane. N is for nitrous oxide, A is for halothane, E is for n-fluorine, M is for methoxyfluorine, and S is for sevoflurane. So those are the different kinds of inhaled anesthetics that kind of includes a lot of them here. Now I want to directly go into the toxicities and then I'll talk about the clinical effects after toxicities because I find it easier to go to toxicities first. Okay, so this is how I do it. Uh, the easiest for me to remember is the one with halothane because it starts with halothane H. So the toxicity is going to be hepatotoxicity. Okay, so the next one is going to be I want to talk about is methoxyfluorine. Methoxyfluorine, you know how it starts with an M? What letter follows M? N, right? So it causes nephrotoxicity. Now the next one is I want to talk about is going to be N-fluorine. N-fluorine is a pro-convulsant. Last of all, we have nitrous oxide, which is going to expand inside the body. It, it ex expands inside the body. Okay, about isoflurane and sevoflurane, I don't really know um, any specific toxicity related to those. So if you know, please leave me a comment below. Okay, now let's talk about the clinical effects of inhaled anesthetics. Okay, so we have to remember that each group of anesthetics has its own effect. We have to think of the clinical effects of inhaled anesthetics. So let's talk about that. So inhaled anesthetics causes a lot of depression. There is going to be cardiovascular depression. There is going to be respiratory depression. There is going to be decrease cerebral metabolic demand. The only thing that is going to be increased is going to be there is going to be increased cerebral blood flow. So let me ask you a question here. What other anesthetic, and obviously that's not an inhaled anesthetic, what other anesthetic also causes increased cerebral blood flow? At w and what anesthetic causes a uh, decrease in cerebral blood flow? And they fall under what category of anesthetic? Okay, another anesthetic that causes increased cerebral blood flow is going to be ketamine. Ketamine is an intravenous anesthetic. And, uh, and uh, the other anesthetic which causes a decrease in cerebral blood flow is going to be barbs, barbiturates. As we know that many barbiturates are used as anesthetics, phenobarbital is just an example. Anyways, that's uh, an overall overview of inhaled anesthetics. The only toxicity that I kind of forgot to mention here, and I usually forget that, it's because it does not fall under this nice way I remember it, is inhaled anesthetics also cause malignant hyperthermia. Okay. Malignant hyperthermia can be treated with what drug? Dantrolene. And what is the mechanism of action of dantrolene? It prevents the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum in the skeletal muscles. So calcium cannot bind to the skeletal muscles and to the troponin and the tropomyosin. Um, as a result, there is not going to be muscle contraction, so you're not going to have uh, all those symptoms of rigidity um, of uh, malignant hyperthermia. So we use dantrolene, which prevents calcium release. 